And economists are tipping the unemployment rate could rise much higher than expected and hit 7% by the end of the year. There was a huge fall in the number of job advertisements last month and analysts are warning that demand for a plan... While unemployment was always going to be a talking point, the state... And here I was, very highly qualified, uh, with a lot of experience, uh, not, too, not very old, back then I was only in my 30s, you know, uh, early 30s and stuff, and, um, and not even able to get a single interview, which was very strange. Um, my wife uh, at the time was thinking, maybe you're doing something wrong, and we just went through the whole process, re-examine how we wrote our CV, maybe take a few things out, add a few things in, always tell the truth, always tell the truth. But, you know, look at stuff, but never. And so I applied, um, um, my assessment, I lost count after a while, but I think I applied for about 200 jobs. I was really upset at the time, I couldn't find a job. But at least I have a part-time job, I, I have a casual job mm. to work as a cashier in Woolworths. Mm. So I, I still get some income. Okay. Lot of them. I send my resume every week, I think more than Maybe more than three hundred that's me I have sent. Three hundred? Yeah. And I have attended um several interviews but not successful. I remember those days when I was I was actually looking into my pocket and saying if I would spend one dollar for uh, for a drink. So every morning I was going outside I, I was going out with my food, you know, so I didn't, I didn't have to buy food outside because I wanted to save my money. I tried to, or I applied uh, for a couple of jobs in the sector, but I couldn't get even, a, even an interview. I'm not sure what's the reason, maybe because of my qualification or the experience is not in that sector. That could be one region or maybe, I don't know, maybe there's some other region. Um, it said that my skill is very good, but my English is not good enough, so that's why I was failed. Um, there are a number of challenges or difficulties that they face. Um, probably, the, 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 probably the most significant one is the language barrier. I have to say, but also their, their accent. Um, sometimes I found that with some of my clients, um, if a person had a very strong accent and it was a, a little bit difficult to understand, the new, you know, the immigrants, they have a high expectation. They feel that they have come to a country of opportunity, so all the jobs are waiting for them, and they'll have to get it like that. But that's not the case, mm. and it, we cannot expect it. That's, that's a wrong way of approaching to yeah, um, any mm. job. Uh, we'll have to start, mm. we'll have to start from somewhere. From my experience, what I've found is, um, in Australia, rather than your academic qualification, your work experience is really um, it's important. It's important, and um, I think they look for your experience and your skill. What skill you've got, and how much, and how you can contribute you know, to the uh, requirement, or how well do uh, your uh, your skill match the requirement. The first is is having unrealistic expectations about their ability to gain employment in terms of the time frame. So, a lot of I met a lot of migrants who. Um, you know, had been here for a couple of weeks or even a month or two months and, and were really expected to find employment quite quickly. So it's, it, was, it was very difficult when, when you're just constantly putting in so much effort into applying for jobs and not even getting a call to say, can you come in to talk to us? Uh, and I suspected there was an element of racism and exclusivity going on. There has to be this, uh, the perception 
of that that certain that certain jobs are suitable only for certain people from certain certain cultural backgrounds. Yeah, but at least I get the interview experience, so I I know how to do best next time. I know what they usually to ask. Okay. And then what's the process? of the interview. And there's a limit to what you can do. Job applications, um, you know, for a lot of the jobs that I apply for are professional, professional type jobs. And uh, it takes a long time to write a job application. You just don't do have a job application and put it for every job. Because you've got to look at the job specs, what they want, and then you've got to write to address the criteria they want you to address, to want you to answer to. Um. So if they've only been here for a short period of time, obviously their expression and um, their ability to go through their CV or resume um, quite fluently and confidently um, it is impacted greatly. I, I, I took a photograph, I put the photograph, me big, big head smiling, you know, and put some Photoshop and made myself handsome, put it on the CV next to my name, right, printed it out and then sent it in, uh, I mean sent it in by email. Uh, I got a call within two hours. I negotiated with one of the migrant resource centers to do a placement, free volunteer placement. I started doing that. And that was a big help because I could actually put their details into my resume saying that I'm doing some work. And um, I, I was meeting other different people. I used to carry one you know, small card writing all my skills there and my contact number at the back. And I used to give it to everyone saying is that if you know any opportunity, give me a call. I'll be happy to face the interview. Uh, also, just some cultural uh, barriers as well, like the way that um, we behave in interviews, I think, is impacted by um, our culture. And, and just, you know, some people had difficulty making eye contact, some people had difficulty shaking hands very firmly or confidently, or even shaking hands at all. Um, and I found some people um, were. Um, a little bit passive or very uh, quiet or shy in interviews and I noticed that of people from certain cultures as well.